What if I told you that years before YouTubers were ramming movement and Vincero down your throats, there was another affordable luxury brand being shilled en masse? No, not the fifth, not original grain, not even spaghetti scametti. No, today we're talking about Tay Rock. What? That name ring any bells? Well, a few years back, this brand was doing the rounds with appearances on some of the largest channels on YouTube, including in this mysterious, now unlisted video by fashion guru Alpha M. In all of these videos, the creators hype up how premium and stylish these watches are, with one girl going so far as to say the watch changed her life. Quite the statement, eh? Despite being so incredible and offering high quality luxury at affordable prices, this brand has since fallen into obscurity, with zero content to speak of in recent times. Surprisingly, they are still in business today. Profitability unknown. Why did they fall from grace when competitors like Movement had their sales rocket? Why was that old video unlisted and how good are their watches actually? Well, to find the answers to these questions, I bought one of them lightly used on eBay for 44 quid. Did you really think I'd pay full price for a watch that's highly likely to be rubbish? <laughs> Either way, I ensured that I chose a model that was still currently available on their site, that being this black chronograph. It's listed on their website as the TXM093 and goes for £100 new with a leather strap. The TXM116 I have here is identical, but was sold with the bracelet instead, and likely cost a few quid more, as is commonplace in the watch market. I'm going to assess this watch on three fronts. Design, quality, and price. Those are surely the only things that matter when buying a fashion-forward watch, right? It's got to look good and stay looking good without breaking the bank. Unfortunately, this Tayrock falls at the very first hurdle. Not only is the style of this watch incredibly generic, bearing a worrying resemblance to thousands of the super cheap chronographs on Chinese wholesale sites, but it's been executed so poorly that even at a glance, it looks like an eight pound grocery store watch. No, seriously, I'd expect to see this on a shelf next to the eight pound watch that I previously reviewed on this very channel. At least Primark didn't have the goal to charge £100. Okay, I'm about to show you why this looks like an £8 watch. But just to clarify, I'm not hating on this watch just because it's, you know, not a luxury watch or anything like that. I've reviewed hundreds of affordable watches on this channel before. If you stick around to the end, I'll show you a much better alternative that offers better value as well. This is not only to expose, you know, what this watch is doing wrong. I think it'll be useful for you at home so you know what to look for or what to avoid. <laughs> Okay, the hands and markers are of the same style as those on the eight pound watch, with rudimentary flat, roughly cut rectangular shapes used across all of them, as these are the cheapest to manufacture. There's also no luminescence on this watch to speak of. You'll notice that the white date window doesn't fit in with the color scheme at all. That's likely because white is the basic default option for this movement and is consequently cheaper than a custom black one, which would have much better blended in. This of course ties into quality. Higher quality watches tend to look better, and well-designed watches can usually manage this feat at somewhat of a distance. Even from a couple of meters away, this Tayrock looks soulless, like it's got no panache or personality to it at all, as everything but the chronograph hand is showcased in the same bland color. It feels like a small child designed this watch on Microsoft Paint and used the fill tool on every component. Instead of putting the time in to create an interesting design, Tayrock has run with a minimal viable product and labeled it minimalist to try and disguise that fact. I'd hazard a guess that these watches cost less than four pound per unit to produce as the quality is among the worst I've ever seen. When side by side with virtually any alternative at this price point, even a wristwatch novice could spot the large discrepancy. The seller told me the watch hadn't seen much wrist time and I believe him. After all, the Scratch Pro Mineral Crystal surprisingly has no scratches to speak of, so we can't have used it that much. Even this limited usage has exposed the pitfalls of cheap PVD coating. In numerous places, the black surface is peeled and scratched away, revealing the silver beneath, and this will only continue to get worse over the life of the watch, leading to it looking worse. The black coating on the less expensive and better spec to Lyle and Scott watch that I reviewed felt far more durable, at least during my time testing it. Outside of the PVD surface, the steel case is just a bog standard shape with imprecise edges that likely make it more cost effective to mass produce. A quick look at the bracelet reveals that no attempt has been made to craft a cohesive look, as one end link is popping out disjointed from the lugs, while the opposite sits entrenched with the lugs riding up on either side. More quality control blunders are evident on the dial, with the main logo tilted anti-clockwise and numerous dust and dirt particles visible on the underside of the crystal, as well as on the dial itself, all of which are impossible to wipe away unless the innards are completely removed. The chrono hand doesn't even reset to 12, instead defaulting to near the seven o'clock marker. 
granting out one of the most lacklustre designs in Ben's Watch Club history. I popped open the rear to see what was powering this watch. What met me was the Zero S11 Miyota Quartz movement. While far from the luxury quality as advertised, this actually isn't awful for a watch at this price, with these generally going for around £15 per unit, depending on purchase quantity. Nevertheless, it's not nearly as desirable as the more complex mechanical or solar movements that are often attainable in watches for around £100 or even less. Let's start answering some of those opening questions then. First up, Tayrox Fall versus the rise of MVMT, or movement and alike. To be honest, the quality of the two brands is actually very comparable. In other words, both are equally garbage. Therefore, we have to look at the other side of the coin to make sense of this, marketing. While Tayrock hit things hard initially, and they did sponsor some YouTubers, it seems they've shifted the majority of their efforts over to Instagram, where there's a sea of paid posts. Very few of which are disclosed accordingly, might I add. As such, I suppose they haven't technically fallen yet, as I'd first thought. Rather, they appear to be chugging along, but haven't experienced that headline-grabbing growth of some of their competitors. Conversely, Movement, perhaps in part due to the funds raised via a successful Indiegogo campaign, has managed to maintain a strong paid presence across both platforms. Crucially, whether by instruction or not, Movement influencers tend to promote that brand far harder, and with much bolder claims regarding the quality and style of the pieces, as well as the supposed lifestyle improvements you'll get by buying one. Maybe this extremely aggressive approach is paying dividends, with viewers persuaded into buying them after watching. Now to that hidden video. For those unfamiliar with unlisting, YouTube basically allows you to control the visibility of your videos by choosing one of several options. The unlisted option is similar to the private setting, where the video is only available when it's embedded in an external site or when the viewer has the exact URL. This is essentially a way of hiding content from the public eye without technically taking it down. There are several reasons why Alpha M may have done this. Perhaps he was embarrassed about heaping praise on an awful watch brand? Well, he still shills movement at every opportunity, so we know that can't be the case. Maybe he was displeased with the poor production quality from back in 2015 and just didn't want it on his channel anymore. There are many far older videos still live on his channel, so that can't be it. Or did he unlist the video to prevent those messages from clashing with his current paid sponsors, Movement and Vincero? To me, that last one seems highly likely, as he's gone and done the same thing with another Timex review. And that one's not a half bad little watch. What's my judgement on the quality then? Well, for context, I reviewed an Accurist chronograph a while back, and that watch is cheaper, is much higher quality, looks better and less generic, is from a more prestigious brand, and doesn't use false marketing to attract customers. I'll affiliate link it alongside some other solid alternatives in the video description, as well as the full video of the Accurist on screen now for you to watch next. Happy hunting. Who comes up with these brand names, eh? Who, who comes up with these brand names? 